In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this Figma design with HTML and CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a Figma project that I've already designed. In my previous video, I showed you how to create this entire Figma design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the main contents of the page using HTML and CSS. If you're interested in watching how I created this design with Figma, I'll link that video in the description below. So initially, I created these guides that will help show the different areas of content that we will create on the page. So first I have this nav bar on the top, which I'm not going to show in this video. For this video, I'm going to focus on the actual main content of the page. If you're interested in watching a video on how I would create this navigation bar, please leave a comment down below. And then the focus of this video will be on the main content. So I have this area blocked off as a main area. And within that main, I'm going to have this H1 element labeled, and then I'm going to create these cards. But I want these cards to display in a particular way. So I am actually going to put these cards in a wrapper element. And the point of this wrapper element is to basically hold all these cards. And you can decide how you want this wrapper to behave depending on your project. So you can make this a grid or use Flexbox or some other kind of alignment method to get these cards to show up the way you want them to. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I will create this using Flexbox. So now we have an understanding of the kind of areas of content we're going to have on the page. I'm going to jump into CodePen and start developing it. So initially in CodePen, I just have the link to the font family that I'm going to use. And then I have some color variables that I declared in the root. So initially I'm going to write all of the HTML code and then I will style it using CSS. So to get started, first I'm going to include a body tag in the HTML. And in that body tag, I'm going to have multiple elements. Again, the nav bar would be at the top and then the main would be second. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on this main area. So in my body, I'm going to put a main tag. And within that main tag, I'm first going to include an H1 element, which will say get started. So that is referring to this element here. And then I'm going to create the wrapper element that will hold these cards. I'm going to create a div with a class of wrapper. Then I'm going to create each individual card. So if we just zoom in a little bit more, I can see that there is this initial container that's going to hold all of the elements. Within each container, I have a header element and then a description element. At the top, I have this numbering sequence. And if we zoom out a little bit more, we can see that the numbers are labeled one, two, three. I want the number to represent which step it is in the process. So that will be determined by which div it is in the HTML. So this is actually the first div container in the HTML, so it will be number one. This is the second div container, so it will be number two. And this is the third div container, so it will be number three. Now there are multiple ways that you could do this. You could create a circle above each container and then include a number element that is hard coded. But I'm actually going to create a container and then use the before property that will have a counter to show these numbers. So that way in the future, if we wanted to add more steps to the process, these numbers would automatically appear. So jumping back into CodePen, I'm going to start by creating each container. So I'm making a div class of container. And within that container, it's going to hold all the elements. So I'm going to create an H2 with a class of title. And then I'm going to include a paragraph tag with a class of description. So this is all of the basic HTML that we need to create each container. So now I'm going to take each container div and then copy it and paste it. Now, in order to see content on the page, we actually have to fill this in with content. So I'm actually going to copy and paste the information from the design into the HTML. So now we have all of the HTML written and then everything else will be completed within CSS. 
So initially in the CSS, first I'm going to declare box sizing and set it to border box and also set a universal margin and padding set to zero. Next, I'm going to apply certain styling for the body element. So first I'm going to reference the font family that we placed in the header. And then I'm going to set the background color to a light gray that I already defined as a variable. Next, I define this main element. And back in the design, I defined this main element as this section that would hold all of the page's content. I wanted this to be completely separate from the navigation bar because I actually need some margin around this main element. So first I'm going to reference the main element and then I'm going to add a margin of two REM. This adds a little bit of breathing room on the page. Next, I'm going to work on the H1 element. So the H1 element just says get started and I want to place it in the center. So I'm going to say text align center. Then to help us see each container, I'm going to apply certain styling to the container element and then I'm going to work on the alignment. So first I'm going to reference the class of container and I'm going to add a box shadow. So now we can see each container on the page. Then I'm going to add a bit of a border radius. And right now the text is right around the sides of the container. So I want to add a bit of breathing room. So I'm going to add some internal padding of two REM. This instantly improves the legibility on the page. Next, I want to define the size of each container. Now I don't want these containers to stretch as the screen grows. Instead, I always want the width of these elements to be a particular size. So back in my CSS, I'm going to define the width of each one of these to 300 pixels. I'm going to set the margin of these to 0.5 REM to have a little bit more breathing room between each one. I'm going to set the background color to white. I'm going to have it as a text align center. And then I'm also going to set the position to relative. And I'm going to set it to this particular position property because each of these elements will have a counter on top. And because I'm going to set each counter as a position absolute, I want these counters to have a relationship to the actual container that it's representing. So that's why I need to set the actual container to relative. So that way this position absolute will be in reference to the one that's relative. I know CSS positioning can be a bit confusing, so sometimes it just takes a couple of tries to really get the hang of it. And then within here, I want to improve some of the spacing, so I'm going to set that title element to have a margin, two REM, then zero, then one, and then zero. Next, I'm going to work on the counters. And again, you could hard code this so that you create another div inside of each container that is a circle and that contains a number to it, but I actually want this to appear dynamically. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So in here, I'm going to reference the container tag and then I'm going to add a before property. So this before property will appear before every div that has a class of container. So first I'm just going to set a particular width and height. I'm going to set the background color to the primary color. Then I'm going to set the position absolute and display of block. And then I need to include a content tag. I'm going to replace this in a little bit, but right now I'll leave it as empty. So now we can actually see the before property on the page, but we are going to manipulate it to get it to look just like these counters. So in order to make it a circle, first I'm going to add a border radius and set that to 50%. Then to fix the alignment, I'm going to make the top a negative 2 REM. And then I'm going to make the left 7.4 REM. Now I actually want there to be a number inside of here that represents which container it is in the sequence. So in order to do that, first I'm actually going to take this content tag and put it at the top. So first I'm going to add a counter increment and set it to number. And then for the content, I'm going to write counter and then number. So that way the content that appears references this number. Now, when I do that, you can see that each container has a counter of one, which isn't actually accurate. So we need to define where we want this counter to start. 
We don't want the counter to start every single time a new container appears because in that way, every container will just be labeled one. So instead, I need to look at its parent element and set a counter reset to that parent element. So I need to actually refer to the wrapper container and set the reset property there. So in here, I'm going to reference that class of wrapper and I'm going to write counter reset and set that to number. So this is basically saying when the CSS comes across an element identified as wrapper, you can reset the numbers. But internally, I want the numbers to actually increment. So here I have counter reset set to number. Number is actually a variable, so you can call this whatever you want to, but I'm just calling it number to be simple. So every single time there's a wrapper, start the counter reset of this variable. And then within each container, add the before element. And every single time you see a container, increase the value of that number element by one. So that way each container has its own number. So now that we actually have the numbers appearing on the page, we just have to do a little bit of styling so they look a little bit better. In the design, the numbers are quite large, so I'm going to want to apply a similar styling in the HTML. So in that before property, I'm going to set the font size to 3 REM. I'm going to make the font weight bold. I'm going to set the line height to 3 REM. So this helps the alignment of the text in the circle. So everything is looking really good so far, but the overall alignment does not match the design. Going back to the design, I want the three cards to be placed next to each other in the desktop view, but if the window shrinks, I want the cards to be placed in one column. So the way that I'm going to do that is with Fluxbox. So going back up here, I'm going to refer to that wrapper class, which again holds all of the containers. And for this wrapper, I'm going to set the display of this to Flex. Instantly, we can see that that changes the alignment on the page. So now all the cards are placed in one row. So to allow the cards to go onto another line, I have to set the flex wrap to wrap, which will allow the containers to go onto the next line if it needs to. This definitely adds a little bit of breathing room on the page. I'm also going to justify the content in the center so that way all the cards will be placed in the center of the screen. So that way if I increase it, it goes onto one line. And if I decrease the size, it goes into one column. There needs to be a bit of space between each element. So I'm going to set a margin top and bottom to four REM and zero to the left and right. This definitely adds a little bit of breathing room. We do notice a little bit of overlap between each card. I'm going to set the margin of these to zero for the top, 0.5 REM for the left and right, and then four for the bottom. So just to review what we did, first I looked at the Figma design and I created these guides to help indicate the different areas of content that I will create in HTML and CSS. I created this main area that will hold all of the page's content, and then this wrapper area that will hold each container. Then within the body, I created the main element that would hold the header and then all of the containers. So I added an H1 of get started and a div class of wrapper that will hold all of the containers. Then for each container, I had a div class of container, which again would hold the entire element. I included a title and a description. Then in the CSS, first I declared some variables. I had the box sizing set to border box. And then I set certain properties for the body and the main. Then for the H1, I set text aligned to center, and then I added the wrapper element. Now I wanted the wrapper element to be responsive depending on the screen size, so I set it to a display of flex, but you could use grid or another kind of alignment method. Then I wanted all of the containers to be placed in the center of the screen, so I set the justify content to center. And then I included the styling for each container. And then on top of each container, I wanted to add a before element that would increment depending on which number it was in the sequence. So that's why I added the counter increment of number and I set the content to the counter number. And then I added certain styling to this to fix its alignment and style. And then finally, I added some treatment for this title so that way there was a bit of breathing room in the actual design. So there you go. That's how I created this Figma design using HTML and CSS.
Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.